All right, everybody, round one of the 2016 NFL Draft is in the books, and we're here to talk to you about it from a fantasy perspective. I'm Marcus Grant. He is Alex Gelhar, and it was kind of... What a round it was. It was an eventful night. Lots of trades, lots of interesting, surprising picks. Uh, a couple guys fell out. Thankfully, none of the fantasy-relevant guys fell out, which is what we're going to be talking about here. So should we should we talk about the big name first, who went number four to Let's Dallas? Let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott. Fanny's, because fantasy dreams came true, Marcus. There was so much talk about what the Cowboys might do it for. You know, Elliott was one of the names. Jalen Ramsey was one of the names. Bosa Joey, got taken both. Joey for Bosa was one of the names there. And so, you know, I, I think for Cowboys fans, there were so many different ways they could go. But for fantasy, fantasy owners, fantasy enthusiasts, Ezekiel Elliott to the Dallas Cowboys. You're taking the best running back in the draft, putting him behind the best offensive line in the league. It is a match made in fantasy. Absolutely. People should be jumping for joy because Elliott's going to be in line for a ton of touches now. He can pass block. He can catch. He's not coming off the field on third downs. And, I mean, honestly, like already he's probably going to be a second-round pick in fantasy leagues once the fall comes around. You might have to jump into the first if you want to take him in redraft leagues. How crazy is that? I mean, we're talking about a guy who has yet to step on an NFL field. Right. And, I mean, there's already talk. You could see it on Twitter with draft Twitter. There were guys talking about Ezekiel Elliott maybe being a top five run- fantasy running back. This yeah, year. absolutely. Well, I mean, you think about it, too. It's not that crazy. You want to be ahead of the curve on these things. Eddie Lacy's rookie year, great back, fell into a great situation, finished sixth overall in fantasy scoring for running back. So had you drafted him in the first round in August, people would have been like, what a dumb pick. <laughs> End of the year, you would have been laughing your way to a title. All right, so we know where Elliott's going to be. We're all excited about that. Let's move on to the wide receivers, though, because there was a lot of talk about the guys catching passes this year. Absolutely. And we saw a run kind of in the middle of that first round of wide receivers, and it started with a name that I think a lot of people were kind of dubious on. Will Fuller was uh, right near the front of that list there. Right. Well, he, I mean, he came after Coleman. You want Correct. to talk Coleman first? Let's talk, let's talk Corey Coleman all first, right, actually. All right, so Corey Coleman went to the Browns, which – I mean, I was kind of hoping for Coleman. He went to a place with a little better quarterback, maybe some weapons around him. But as uh, as Matt Harmon said in our Slack chat, he could get pummeled with targets there. I mean, 138 targets walked out the door this offseason between Travis Benjamin and Dwayne Bowe and all of his 13 <laughs> targets. But Corey Coleman's going to be the number one guy there. Yes, he's got a little bit limited of a route tree, but I believe in what Hugh Jackson's going to do. And, uh, you know, I might, I might be a believer in RG3 turning things around if he's got somebody, got somebody as explosive as Corey Coleman to hit the hit with the pass. Well, I passes. feel like you know you, you know how I felt about this all this talk about you know what if Josh Gordon what if Josh goes Gordon? back? So I feel like now we've got a speedy wide receiver from Baylor to pair it with Robert Griffin the third, so yep. we can wash all that Josh Gordon talk away. But there's no doubt he's going to walk in and be the number one target, or at least number one wide receiver in this offense. He and Gary Barnage will probably split the majority of the targets, I would think. I way. I would agree. And Duke Johnson, don't don't uh, discount him. He this had, is true. You know, 60, pa- 60 passes he caught last. Very year. true. All right, now moving on to Wolf Will Fuller. A little bit premature there, but he's the guy who comes next off the board, which I think caught a lot of people by surprise because Josh Doxson and Laquan Treadwell were still were still there. But the Houston Texans go out and they get the speed, so they want to pair with DeAndre Hopkins. Right. And from an actual football standpoint, this makes a lot of sense. Like Will Fuller, as we've talked about, he has his drops, but he is lightning fast and some inconsistencies in his game. But all they need with a guy like Nuke there is Fuller to get over the top a few times and make a couple of those big plays. We actually saw Nate Washington do them for that a few times last year, but he couldn't stay healthy. Fuller's going to be a better version of that. Unfortunately, that role is going to be very boomer bust and limit his ceiling in fantasy, but he could be a later round dynasty guy and, of course, a late round flyer in redrafts, too. And not a bad best ball pick if you're playing MFL 10s or anything, too. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think you were right on the nose when you say he's a boomer bust guy. You put him in your lineup, and you know what? He could get you three catches for, you know, 120 and a touchdown. Or he could get you, you know, one catch for 10. Yep, yeah, so. it's going to be a tough one to battle. <laughs> uh, moving on, though, then we had th- – there were a run of three wide receivers in a row. Which apparently from the network broadcast, first time first that's time ever happened. ever in the draft. So we all watched history, guys. Kind of amazing. Josh Doxson goes to Washington, and my first thought was, that means that's the end of Pierre Garcon probably in Washington. Him or Deshaun Jackson. I was looking this up. I saw some other smart people tweeting it on, uh, on Twitter, tweeting it on Twitter. Uh, they count – Eight million against the cap for Garcon and six point seven five for Deshaun Jackson. Both are in the final years of their contracts, so one if not both of them are gone. So if you were worried Doxon was going to a situation where they already had a lot of guys catching passes, Reed, Garcon, Djax, st- stay pat because one of those guys could be gone. And uh, Doxon's a great fit there and could be a, a true number one receiver in fantasy in no time. I mean, just talk about an explosive, athletic guy. You put him there, and and you know everybody wonders what Kirk Cousins is going to do for an encore after last season. 
You give him a weapon like Josh Doxson. It's going to help a lot. It's going to help He's a He's a more complete wide receiver than, than Djax or Garcon. So, and speaking of complete wide receivers, Teddy Bridgewater really hasn't had one to this point he in does his now. career. We thought Cordero Patterson might be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wallace was there, but he you know, got proven to be what we thought he was for Miami. Now he gets Laquan Treadwell, a guy who isn't the biggest burner, but who does a lot of other things right. He does a lot of the other things right. We, we talked about him before. He is such a technician. I mean, obviously, he's still kind of working through an injury he had while he was at Ole Miss, so he's getting a little bit better in that respect, but does so many other things very, very well, has great hands, and, and I know – there's been knock on him because, you know, on, on film he doesn't get a ton of separation, but he finds ways to get open. And you're talking about a guy in Teddy Bridgewater who isn't necessarily known for his deep ball. He's known more for his accuracy. So it's just about finding enough space, getting open, and making some of those tough catches. And I think those are all things that Treadwell does very well. Absolutely. One thing I'm excited for, too, is Treadwell in the red zone for that team. Stephon Diggs, Mike Wallace, not the biggest guys, greatest red, red zone threats. Kyle Rudolph really hasn't lived up to his potential. You put a guy like Laquan Treadwell, who's a beast at the catch point, and we've seen him just moss people in the end zone in college, mm -hmm. could be a good fit there. going to be very, very interesting. Now, quarterback-wise, there weren't a whole lot of surprises. We knew that Goff and Wentz were going to go 1-2 to the Rams and, and to the Eagles, so that wasn't a big surprise. But a little bit later on in the round, right near the end of the round, we see the Denver Broncos trade up. They go get Paxton Lynch. Now, that creates kind of a log jam in Denver because you've got Lynch to go along with Mark Sanchez and Trevor Simeon. You got a, a quarterback it's kind competition. Of you to mention Trevor Simeon there. Yeah, I figured I'd be nice about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, but that creates kind of a log jam and a competition there. Moreover, now you've got San Francisco. They don't know what to do with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, you've got you know Sam Bradford kind of stuck right now in Philadelphia where he doesn't want to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, this doesn't necessarily solve Denver's problems. But it also creates a whole lot of other quarterback issues in other places. It does. So we're going to have to watch all those uh, play out. But the other quarterback situation it creates in Denver is he could create he could compete with Mark Sanchez for that starting job day one. It seems like the draft community split on Lynch. Some people think he's very pro-ready and he might have been the best in the class. Others think, like Mike Mayock and some other guys, he needs a year. But if he is to come into the situation and start from day one, he's the best of the rookie quarterback bunch because of the weapons around him. He's got a great running game with C.J. Anderson, and he also has Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders to throw to. Like, nobody else, Wentz, Goff, otherwise, is going to have that that situation and those pass catchers to be targeting. Yeah, I would think that what I would expect out of Paxton Lynch, if he's able to win this job and get the starting starting spot, at times it'll be what we saw to Brock Osweiler a little bit. He may have some yep. nice games. He'll have some games where he kind of struggles a little bit. And I think on a week-to-week -week basis, you'd have to look at the matchup. He may be a DFS play if the matchup right. is right. But he's certainly not a guy that you're going to draft or, or certainly not expect to start your every single so. week. Unless, yeah, unless it's Dynasty. Otherwise, he's a streaming candidate at best. But he's got the benefit of that great defense. Could put the ball in some favorable spots for him. All right, so that was a good first day of the draft. There's Very exciting. plenty more to come on Friday. We'll have rounds two and three. You can find us at NFL.com. Slash fantasy. We have our live blog going, so check it out there. Check it out. Uh, we've got all sorts of comments. Stay with us on Twitter as well at NFL Fantasy, and uh, we will see you here tomorrow night. We'll be back tomorrow night. All right, take care.